Okay. Okay, it's 6.30. Good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, the only uh, one I have is Carissa Pankratz. Sorry if I butchered the name. Nope, you've got it correct. Good evening. Um, and do you guys have the materials um, that we've sent over for the elevations and the site plan? Uh, which project is this? Uh, it's Hadley, Massachusetts. Uh, sorry, it's uh, the Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Uh, yes, we sent that around, but let me see if I can uh, bring that up. Um, actually, I, I think I sent it around about a month ago. You did. Is there any way we can see you, Carissa? I'd like to read lips. Bill's trying to get it. Absolutely. Sorry. I'm just I'm away from my desk, so I'm working from my phone. Right. So good evening. Uh, let's see. That is apparently it. Um uh, So what we're doing is an exterior update. So um, you'll see the latest colors for the Taco Bell. Um, it is, so there's um, neutral tones on the building with a purple accent band. And then um, we'll be updating the signage to be the current brand signage, as well as the drive-through equipment will be updated and refreshed um, so that it also matches the uh, brand Taco Bell. Okay, uh, let me see what I can bring up here now. Um, this, I believe, is your current. That is correct. So you can see that we've got um, kind of more a uh, brown. So we still have the tan color um, with a um, more of a, I think it's called Rookwood. rookwood um, that's the kind of more orangey color. And so that orange color goes away and it's more um, tans and uh, grays, gray tones. Okay, I'll bring that up in a minute. Uh, remind me, what's the street address here? One second, I had that pulled up. Uh, we are located at, let's see if I can zoom in here for now. Three five eight Russell Street. Okay. So as you can see, we're keeping the existing um, tower peak and then um, and then just really updating the colors so that they align. Um, so they're still on the neutral palette. Let's see, I think I brought two of these up here. So these are just some different elevations. Correct. So um, you have the drive through on the bottom elevation. Um, the upper left is the front elevation. And then the upper right is the rear elevation. So you're actually going with purples? Correct. So the purple is the accent band around the top. It's also the uh, recessing on the tower behind the um, new Talk Bell signage. And then the expression panels will be updated to receive new artwork. Are those the corporate colors now, purple? Uh, yes, those are the current um, colors. I think they've had purple for a while, Mike. Oh yeah. They have, um, it's just, they're incorporating it in a slightly different manner now. So in previous, you may have noticed in other towns, um, either they had kind of the accent band had multi 
multiple colors. It's just now that it's a single purple band. And you said you were changing signage as well, just this. Correct. So how, there's how you, there okay. will still be a bell sign. Um, and I believe we're just going back in the same locations as the previous signage. Um, but we're putting up the new brand um, bell sign. So there's no footprint expansion? No. Is this is the is the ta is the taco bill the same size as the existing? I believe so. Yes. What about the sign out front or on the side pylon sign? Um, that will also receive an update to. It'll get refaced and then it will have a uh, new LED lighting, and then it, the pole will be painted black, as well as the cabinet. So it'll yeah. look like a new sign. Do you have a detail of the sign? Of the pylon? I do not on hand, but I can provide one. Yeah, I just want to make call. sure that it stays externally illuminated. Yes. Okay. Now, in the bottom picture, there's no bell. Is that correct? Correct. I believe the existing one does not currently have a bell, so I don't think we showed a new bell in that location. All right, that would just face the auto parts, whereas the other one faces the intersection. Mm -hmm. there's, two, there's two bells on there. I remember that was a big controversy in the beginning about two signs that were too big, but it's a corner lot. So maybe there's one. Let, let's pull, let me pull up the other. I uh, think there might street. be one. Yeah, there's yep. one. There's on one, the on other each, elevation. one on each street side, but not on right. the drive through side. Right. And you, um, if you can zoom in to that lower uh, left-hand corner, uh, it would give you a better view of what that Taco Bell, the Bell okay. logo looks Let's like. see what we can do here. So three by three. And then it's got, I think, I can tell um, it has two, basically two different colors of purple um, and then that just gives the bell more of a 3D appearance, but it's flat. Well, how does the board want to handle that purple as a, uh, as a corporate color or as a just a refacing? Either way, I mean, it's not in the overlay zone. Yes. I, I mean, it's to me, it's not attractive at all. But if that's what they want to do, I'm not going to really fight it because you're, it, it's, it's their color. I'll leave it alone at that. So there will be no, uh, no awning colors. They're showing none. So that's, uh, I believe the awnings might get a refresh paint. Um, but, but as long as they're not purple, so. Yes, no, they'll, they'll be more of a neutral tone. So there are no other lightings showing the entire building like a lot of storefronts are showing now on Route 9 not on the sign, but just on the building itself? No change there? Um, I'd have to, my coworker put together the renderings, but if you uh, can see the little squares uh, that are kind of space or rectangles that are spaced along the building, those are sconce lighting. So it does have, um, I believe those are up and down lighting, um, but I, I can provide a cut sheet for those as well. I think we have that in here. The, uh, is that the wall washer detail? That sounds about right, yes. Uh, 
I don't know. How do we want to handle that? Remember, we had uh, a concern when Texas Roadhouse came up. It, it had hundreds of extra lights all around the building. Are these new or are they there now? I think they're new. I would need to go back and double check the existing elevations to double check. Um, let's see if I can tell. It looks like they are existing. I'm not seeing any notes on them. I can confirm that and get back to you, but I believe right now they're existing. <laughs> so they would just receive a refresh in the paint color. So it looks like two of them on the south face and five of them on the west face. Were there any on the east face, Bill? the other elevation. Let me pull that up. I would guess there are. Yeah, too many windows open. <laughs> uh, no, that's not what I want. Let's see. Back into this and see where the other window went. There it is. So that's the other. Right. So there's four on that wall. Okay. Which one are you counting as the? If you are you counting these? No, I, I'm counting the ones that are down around head level. Okay. Like, oh, like I equal, see. Equal with the top of the door. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So let me just go back and compare it to the one I took down from the um, <clears throat> sort of their oh, prototype. The, the existing photo. Yeah. I had to, uh, did not leave that one up. So I have to go back to Acrobat to find that. Back to the email. <sighs> so uh, I, I let me see. I I can't bring this up to share again, but I do see there are definitely two uh, sconces on the uh, what would be the North Maple Street side, which is shown. It's what what is shown in this uh, existing conditions photo. So only two, not four. Uh, only. <clears throat> Only two. And are those on the tower or? They are on the, well, let me bring them up just to. Oh. So maybe they are adding lighting, which would be. Uh, let me bring up that, that, and that, and share all three. So these are. See, that is the entrance side. Uh, that's the front elevation, excuse me. Let me see if I can get the... Uh, hmm, I guess I'm, I'm having trouble doing the geometry here. Your actual entrance is on is the entrance on the entrance is on the side, not the front. Correct. I believe we have two entrance doors. There's usually one on the front and one on the side. Okay. All right. Then that would be. Oh, this is only showing the one. Drive through no. side. I must be wrong. I guess we just have the one uh, main front entrance. And well, this I, one, there I'm, are there are doors on either side of the tower. There. That's why I'm confused. There's a vestibule. So okay. let me 
see that this. So it does look like they're adding two more sconces between the door and the tower um, on the east wall there. Is there? Um... OK, there. Those those don't shine up where they shine down. I probably on the sidewalk when it's dark. Right. That's what I'm guessing. I it think does she, seem, it seemed yeah. to be one over here, uh, a third one over here already. Yes. Well, there's something over there. It doesn't look to be the same, but you think that's a light fixture? Okay. Well, I mean, that's okay. Just be aware, um, Carissa, that's that when we give the approval, if the lights mm -hmm. are illuminating too much, on the outside and, and interfering with neighbors or something like that beyond I mean, you know I know there's a limit about property line but it's also a thing about sometimes the light shine up and down and shine right. outward okay and while they may not exactly be meeting <clears throat> level of interference at a, at a budding property they can be annoyances and we would just have you um either dim <laughs> them or somehow adjust them so that they're not doing that right? okay um, something I can potentially provide is um, a photometric to show the light levels they'll be putting off. So this is a, a, this is at a very busy intersection. So uh, glare would be a definite concern. Okay. Uh, yeah, exactly. So what you're what you're saying, Jim, is we can grant the approval, but uh, certainly we have to be aware that. If it does create too much of a mm -hmm. hazard, and, and you, the, the photometrics won't honestly all, all the time show a true picture. We'll give you an example of Texas Roadhouse. When they put their lights in mm -hmm. um, at the property line, they didn't show a lot of light protruding um, at the lines. However, because of the way they shone or shine, I'm not sure what the word is, they were annoying neighbors half a mile away. Okay. And it was simply the way the light was being deflected, I guess would be the best way to say it. And Texas Roadhouse was, was approached and they adjusted somehow their lighting and it mm -hmm. was dramatically better and the neighbors were good with it. Okay, I will definitely make sure the project manager is aware of it, um, as as well as the owner. So that but if we need need to be more than aware, we need to him him to say that he's going to do something about it. Right, yeah. right. Well, I'm I'm just saying that we'll uh, review the plans and our light fixtures and adjust as needed before we make the building submittal. Yeah, so, if the lights are just shining down. Mm -hmm. for illumination, then normally that's not the case, but sometimes they shine outward or upward. Mm -hmm. That's where the problems occur. Okay, I will definitely make a note of that. So I think- Yeah, this isn't, this isn't Telephone Road in Houston. This is Russell Street in Hadley. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we have a couple of open questions. Are, are, are new fixtures being installed? And what are the details going to be like for the ones that are being installed? And uh, the pylon sign detail. Okay. So you're going to be coming back for those anyway. So why don't we just continue this? Uh, I don't think there's, you're not hearing a consensus. I think the consensus you're hearing is that this, this will be okay. Um, but we would like some more detail. Uh, if I, if I go ahead and have, um, if we go ahead and state that the downlight or the light, the sconces on the building will be downlights only. Does that resolve that question? It probably should. It should, yeah. Okay. Um, and then as far as the pylon sign, if possible, we would like to be able to submit for building plans without having to come back through another review, if possible. Um, I think one of the... You have to come back with the pylon sign. Okay. Which... Right. Um, could we potentially separate that out as a separate sign submittal? 
Well, I'm, I'm also looking for a confirmation that the branding at the tower and the, at the two, the east and the south towers is no larger than the current. Because I think, um, I think, I think they may exceed the standard, but if they don't exceed what's already there, then that's probably okay. 64 square feet, right? Magic number. And or whatever is there. Right. I think, I think okay. Rose included the sign. Um, I can't zoom in far enough, but I believe the sign area size, the signage size, it should be on that bottom lower hand corner. Well, At least for the bell, I'd have to confirm the. Right. So then if we have a, if we had similar measurements of the original installation so that we could compare or okay. just go out or go out and field measure what the actual current is. Um, okay. Well, it says 14 by four feet, three inches. So it's gonna be bigger than 64 square feet. Yeah, it looks on the left like it's yeah. three and a half by almost four. And then the Taco Bell. So the standard we apply to a sign as you are showing mm -hmm. uh, here is not to measure its individual components, but to measure mm -hmm. the square around oh, okay. the, whole, uh, uh, the whole fixture. And what you, your sign person has done down here is to give, um, picked out that logo and analyzed that one and then picked out this one mm -hmm. and um yeah I'm, but the question is i suppose we can figure out that's a, a 13 square foot area and um uh, then it doesn't actually call this out for how many square feet it is uh, but it's another uh, eight square feet at least. But what we do, we have to count the- The total square. The total square. Okay. So- um, Which, and there's not a variance approval process for a larger sign, correct? Correct. Not for larger than what you already have. What you already have probably exceeds our current sign design requirements. So as long as we match that sign. How big are your existing signs on right. the building? And if your new signs do not exceed that, you should be okay. Okay. Um, and I didn't know if that was something you guys could write down as a conditional approval and then we could definitely make those adjustments to the signs and then include them in a resubmittal package to you guys um, for your records. Uh, yeah, I think we'd rather not do that. We'll, okay. we'll be meeting again in two weeks. Okay. Um, and you, we can um, take you in, you know, in this, first part of the session and uh, get everything taken care of at once. Okay, so I need to provide you clear detail on the down lighting and adjust our signage um, so that it matches the existing and show dimensions. Are, are, there some sort of, are there some sort of murals also on the building? Correct, there's some- They weren't allowed on Popeyes. Uh, which we recently went through site plan review on. 
let's let's go take a look at the uh i think the one at popeyes was actually a um it was it was a catch it's fried chicken something fried chicken right. or something right. so uh, it was right. part of their branding right yeah. this seems more like uh, the, more like what uh, ll bean did yeah what was on the side of ll bean former sign but what what is what do these things represent? So um, there, it's uh, it's supposed to symbolize that's kind of like a camo print, um, and then there is um, they've got a couple different artwork packages, and this is one of them that is approved by corporate. Um, it does have a logo, or it has a bell in the gamma print. Um, yeah. And there's a bell on the right, isn't there? No. There's a bell on each one of them. So apparently the, is this our Taco Bell, do you know? Or is this just a Taco Bell? The render, rendered elevations. This, those... um, no, this, um, the photo. Yes, this is your Taco Bell. Okay. You know, so we have those frames there already. Correct. No, it's no we expression panels. Be, we would see. just be updating the plans or updating the expression panels to actually have a mural. It's just an uh, so it's just an empty frame now. Correct. I think it looks like graffiti. <laughs> and I'm a big modern art fan. Believe me, I've got quite a few pieces in my house. <laughs> well, I don't know. Do you, do you count the bell area as logo? It's kind of artwork. As, as, as Jim pointed out, this might not be our design taste, but okay. um, they're, will, they're, staking, they're staking their business on it. If it's um, not something that you guys find fits with your city uh, standards, I think we have a couple other options, but I'll uh, have to, I can go back to Rosa and figure out what what is the better option? Go to go to Joe's Pizza in Northampton and see what they got on the wall. <laughs> kind of like that kind of stuff. I, I suppose <laughs> if it would, if there is a variant that is available without your trademark mm -hmm. symbol in it, then um, I, I don't think we really have anything to. Right, I'm just joke a little bit. Right. Okay. So it's mo it's mainly the logo that's the issue. Yeah, then you get into it being an additional sign. Okay. So um, I, what my notes were, we just wanted to know if there were new fixtures being installed mm -hmm. and what the design of the fixture will be, the pylon sign detail, whether the new signage is larger than the current install mm -hmm. uh, using, oh, and using our methodology, which is the square around all of the components and whether the uh, art, I'll call it, is available without a trademark. Okay, sounds good. And uh, and do we need to mention that we reserve the right to revisit the lighting after it's installed? Or is that implied? No, that would that'd be a part of the condition once we approve of it. Yeah, we can put that in the vote. Yeah. Subject to review after installation for, but for, for right now, we're coming back in two weeks. Okay. Or and if, whatever works for you. Nope, two weeks yeah. should work. Um, if we're able to get all of these items approved, will it be approved during this meeting in two weeks? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we can, it doesn't, uh, we can vote on it. It does not have any appeal period. It's a, a waiver of further site plan approval. So um, we, whatever we vote at the next meeting will be effective that, that night. And you can talk to the building commissioner the next morning. 
Okay, great. Okay. Anything else for me before I no, let be you good. carry on? Okay. All right. Well, thank you and have a wonderful evening. You thank you. Okay. You too, Carissa. Um, I know that Mike Spanknable checked in next. I don't know if you have anything or you just enjoying the show. Just enjoying the show. Okay. Mr. Iser is up next. You're on mute, Randy. Okay, how's that? You made it. I did. Um, I have an ANR plan, which I emailed to Mr. Dwyer and Mr. Maximowski before the Friday deadline. So I believe I'm entitled to review this evening. Well, I don't know about <laughs> that. I am, uh, uh, I guess I have to pull it up again. Uh, hang on a sec. I have it right here for me to do it. Uh, yeah, if you want to uh, put it up. Uh, hang on, I have to, uh, I have to enable that. Right. Okay. Great power comes great responsibility. Can you see it? No. no Not yet. No. Click the no, share yeah. button. If you just double click it, it won't. You have to hit the share button. Okay, I thought I did. All right, share screen. And then you have to choose that. It should give you a choice of windows. Like it's coming. There it is. There it is. There we go. Amen. Okay. okay. So this project is 51 and 53 Stockbridge Street. Uh, 51 Stockbridge Street is Michael and Kristen Moriarty. 53 Stockbridge Street is, it was uh, Kristen Moriarty's father, who is Dick Kitsa. Uh, it appears that he has put the put his property in a trust with his daughters as trustees but anyhow so what we're doing here this was a plan uh, a flag lot plan from the 1990s and i talked to you guys about it months ago the the guy never recorded it and i was concerned that it would not be recordable because of the way it had aged but i took it to the registry and they allowed it to be recorded so the issue is that once the planning board signed the plan in 1990, whatever, it given to the assessor and the assessor changed the, or had the assessor's map changed to reflect what was on the plan, but that never transpired between the two parties. There was property that was supposed to be transferred from daughter and son-in-law to father and mother and it never happened so we are correcting that with this plan so if you look at the house existing dwelling number 53 22,326 square feet that's the original house lot of Richard Kitsa and then uh, the that the line goes, it's the light blue line where that Bill's showing goes into the existing barn. So Mr. Kitsa is going to acquire what I'm calling parcel B, 22,296 square feet, added to the existing parcel house lot, gives them a total of 44,622 square feet. Um, and then there is a triangle shown as parcel A, which is going to remain with the original flag lot. Uh, and again, I'm showing this because the assessor's map is incorrect. And it's just going to make life easier on everybody, I think, if we just make believe that the assessors are right, and now they can change it to this. And the purpose of the parcel A triangle being kept with dwelling 51 parcel is that their driveway goes through that. So it would have gone through the land that was intended for the father and they're rectifying that situation. 
Well, well done, Randy. I, huh? I just saw the stakes today, and they they're still there. <laughs> well, at least at least I don't. There's no rowdy neighbors there. <laughs> That's right. So I I move approval. I'll second. You have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Jimmy, Jimmy, yes. I think because you're Zoom, you're supposed to have a roll call vote. If it's unanimous, I think we can get if, by. If, we, if, we, if, we, if we've been using unanimous votes, we haven't been doing a roll call vote. Okay. When it's a all split right. vote, we do. Okay. Um, so what's your schedule looking like for me to get that plan signed or anybody who wants to put their name on it? Uh, Jim, Joe, and I are available to, to sign. Okay. I'll get a hold of one of you in the next couple of days, hopefully. Okay. okay. Jim, All right. you want to uh, stop sharing? Yeah. I'm trying to. <laughs> Sometimes you have to hover around and then the stop sharing pops up. I think it pops up what, red or yellow? Stop share. There we go. You did it. Woohoo. Okay. All right. Thanks, gentlemen. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Randy. You're welcome. All right. Next up, um, I guess it's public hearing. Am I correct? That is correct. Okie doke. And for the public hearing, the Halley Planning Board will conduct a Zoom public hearing on Tuesday, September 20, 2022, beginning at 6.45 p.m. Purpose of the hearing is to review the application of Triangle Properties LLC for site plan approval special permit and farmland preservation bylaw, also known as TDR, for new construction at 13 Russell Street of approximately 900 square feet. The TDR hearing is to account for lack of on-site parking. Plans are available by mailing planning at, planning at Hadley MA or visit the Town Clerk's office during normal business hours, published twice in the Gazette, August 15 and 22. And I wasn't sure if you needed TDR, but I put it in there just in case. You're up, Mr. Squire. Very Perfect. Good. Thank you. We're here. Um, so great, thank you everyone. Uh, Jeff Squire from the Berkshire Design Group here on behalf of Triangle Properties, LLC. Um, and if I can be given screen sharing privileges, I'll just run through a real quick uh, presentation. Okay. Perfect, great. Um, so hopefully everybody can see this aerial image. So 13 Russell Street is a property that was formerly the Getty Station, um, adjacent to the Pride Station, uh, a little bit further east, but it's this small triangular portion of uh, property at the junction of uh, Bay Road and, and Russell Street. Um, it consists of a um, couple of things. There's, there's an existing building that's, that sits at the back of the property now. Um, and there's a large canopy that used to cover the, um, the, the pumps for the gas station that have since been removed along with the tanks. Um, and you can see, you know, on this plan, the outline of the property, which is a little bit funny in that um, as you get to the next property um, adjacent down uh, to the east on Russell Street, it bumps out um, a few feet. So this, this large portion of, you know, property here along Bay Road is, you know, is actually Hadley property that, you know, is now occupied by um, asphalt and, and part of the former Getty station. Um, the proposal is to redevelop the, oops, I'm sorry, is to redevelop the existing building. So it's roughly a 900 square foot building. Um, do this, uh, 900 square foot building, uh, renovate that building, uh, maintain the existing, one of the existing curb cuts, the Western of the more uh, two curb cuts that exist on Russell Street now, there's another one in this location that we're proposing to close. Um, this, the, the proposal is a, is a independent drive-through uh, uh, coffee uh, 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 stand, I guess. Um, it really doesn't have any, there's, you know, it's a very small site, as you know, very limited in terms of what it really is, is um, capable of, of holding. 
And so this, uh, this drive-through coffee establishment seemed to be one way that this property could be reused um, that, you know, provide some benefit to, um, you know, to, to driving into Hadley and then cleaning up the site. So keeping, um, keeping this, this Western more, most curb cut, this would function as the drive-through lane that allows cars to pass through. Um, there'd be a call, uh, ordering tower booth, uh, stand, whatever you want to call those, um, come around, pick up your delivery at the, um, at the existing building and then exit the site onto Bay Road and continue, uh, continue to the east to the, uh, the, in, the main intersection um, that was, uh, that's adjacent to the, the pride corner there. There's a couple of you, uh, employee spaces, parking spaces shown on the, um, on this side of the site, on the Russell Street side of the site. Again, these would be, you know, occupied by employees. So those cars are, are predominantly there for the majority of the you know, the shift of the day, um, you know, they're not going to be exiting and entering very often. Um, there are some guest spaces here, again, to, to speak to the, you know, parking requirements and, and standards. Um, it's a 900 square foot building. They do have um, some storage space that's being proposed. I'll, I'll show you those elevations on the second floor. It's sort of a dormer second story. So in terms of gross square feet, we're just over 2,000 square feet. Um, and um, oh, not on this sheet, but on the uh, on one of the subsequent sheets, I'll, I'll show you what the parking calculations worked out to be so we can certainly have that discussion. Um, this would serve as a one-way entrance in um, off of Russell Street. So cars would have the option of, of stopping here and they could you know order at the window or I think there's a small counter space inside that they could be, uh, you know, order coffee for takeout. But again, those cars would, would exit here and, and then exit back out onto Bay Road. Um, small deck space um, in the back of the building just to offer a respite spot for, you know, travelers or folks that just want to sit outside for a minute and stretch their legs. Um, but it's really not intended to be, a, you know, an outdoor dining space. There's no food um, that is being prepared um, on site. Um, this eastern portion of the site is sort of a lower elevation because of the floodplain, aside from a couple of, um, of uh, native trees, there really is no work for me proposed in this location. Um, and some, you know, some landscape shrubs around some of the, some of the parking. As an improvement to stormwater and to help reduce, um, you know, impacts on either Bay Road or, or Russell Street, um, we are providing a number of, uh, of curb, a flush curb inlet locations that would drain to sort of depressed rain gardens. So, you know, we're, there's no stormwater infrastructure on the site right now. Everything drains either um, to Bay Road or to Russell Street or offsite. We've, we've at least tried to regrade the site um, minimally with, within the extent of the, you know, scope of the project to direct water inward to these small rain gardens infiltrate as, as much as we can when they, you know, when they overflow, they will fill up and just do exactly what they do, uh, do now, but at least there's some opportunity to collect that water and direct it to places that would encourage, um, you know, infiltration. We've got a stone, stone diaphragm at the, at the um, entrance to those or at the curb cut location to help reinforce those. Um, and so, yeah, speaking to the parking requirements, um, where are we here? So again, the building square footage is, um, is in this area here, oh, the single floor is just over a thousand square feet um, for parking. The requirement again is, is twice the gross square footage. So the requirement is 2,048 square feet. And what is shown on the plan right now is 2,070 square feet which would include, you know, roughly this, this box here and, you know, in an area of circulation around, around these vehicles, uh, these parking spaces here. Um, plant, uh, plant list, uh, both, both native species. We've got some wildflower mixes, um, some erosion control mixes, really just to, um, you know, enhance the, the remainder of the site, um, just recognizing that it is a gateway um, property into the into the town of, of Hadley. Um, I know one of the topics that's come up is, you know, uh, one of the suggestions, you know, early back when this uh, project started was something to to welcome visitors. 
this was um, this welcome sign was something that was conceived of at that time. And I, that may have been prior to the one that was then, you know, located across the street. So I think this is, you know, uh, this element is something that um, is certainly up for discussion. I think if there's, um, you know, another suggestion in terms of, you know, uh, uh, identifying the town of Hadley or something that would be beneficial to the town, it's certainly, you know, something that's that's up for um, discussion and we'd be willing to entertain that. Um, that concept. Um, these are just some elevations of, of the renovated building. So again, the, the main footprint, the drive-through window is, is on, on the left side of this uh, plan view, uh, employee and, and uh, visitor restroom, storage closet, small counter space for those that want to come into the building to, to order a, you know something for takeout. Um, this is the view that you would see driving toward the building. So driving east on Russell Street, um, the takeout window. Again, this is an independent coffee shop. So there's no tenant specifically that's been, uh, been chosen or that we are looking at. So in terms of signage and colors, a lot of that is, is still up in the air. We're really just trying to get approval for, for this use as a, as a retail use. Um, on the property, and I, you know, I think as as one of the conditions, certainly would be willing to come back with, you know, specifics as to that that tenant um, and the details of the sign or the colors. Um, it's a it's a clapboard uh, building, um, and again with dormers and and um, mullioned windows, um, an egress stair on the outside to provide access to the storage space upstairs. Uh, but that's only for employee access. And then um, again, just the, you know, what, what we had envisioned for, you know, that, that type of sign, but that, that is certainly something that we can discuss and are willing to entertain, um, you know, another, another logo or another, um, you know, another opportunity there. Site lighting, we've got one pole light in the center of the site. Um, that is, depicted these are very similar to the lights that were um, that are at the climbing uh, the climbing gym it's located right in the center of the site here just to illuminate the drive aisle there's there's uh, an abundance of ambient light uh, on this site given its location at the intersection so not too concerned about um, you know an underlit site in this location but did want to ensure that there was um, you know adequate lighting around uh, the drive-through and, and um, you know, where the vehicles are entering and exiting uh, the building. Um, what else can I say? We did provide a traffic impact statement that was prepared by um, Malone and McBr or McBride and McBroom, I believe. Um, that was done a couple of years ago. So the history of this, just a, a little bit of uh, backstepping is that this was a, a project that they were pursuing um, approval for a number of years ago before COVID, COVID hit, everything sort of get, got put on hold for a little while. Um, we had the traffic impact statement and study done at that time. Um, not much has changed since then. The, the plans and the proposal is still exactly the same. Uh, so hopefully that, um, that report, um, which again, uh, just noted that there was really no significant impact that this project would have given the volumes on, on Bay Road and Russell Street and the improvements that have recently happened. Um, so that was also included as part of the application. Um, I don't know as though I have anything more to, to add at this moment, but happy to entertain any other questions or comments. Yeah. Are they yeah. gonna serve anything else besides yeah. coffee? Yeah. Hold, hold it, Michael, hold it, hold it. Okay. Please, please reckon, be wait and recognize, okay? Mr. Squire, could you please put up that last drawing? Absolutely. This one here? Yeah, that's the one. Great. Yeah. When your compatriot was in earlier and when he was scheduled for the public hearing, comment was made that if you are even half, if this site is even half as successful as a Starbucks or a Dunkin' Donuts on selling coffee, mm -hmm. your stacking is going to be way out onto route nine and that is totally unacceptable sure the comment was made about taking the getting rid of the route nine entrance and wrapping the cars along bay road and entrance and out entrance and exit on bay road 
Mm -hmm. If the car is actually back, backed up enough to stack on Bay Road, that would be a minor problem. But you would gain a lot of stacking through your parking area, your driveway there. Understood. Um, yep. Yeah. Because yeah, so the way it's proposed right now, I don't think I would approve it. Because it's, the cars are going, like I said, if it's half as successful, it's going to back up on Route 9. So there's room, just to clarify this, so there's room for about 10 to 12 cars here, I guess, depending on what size car you're, you know, you're driving. Well, well you're, you're showing eight cars. Right. And cars right. aren't going to buckle. From what I've seen, at the, I'm going to make this basis on what I've seen at other coffee shops, Starbucks and Dunkin's. And during their busy times, Starbucks has exceeded 25 cars. Mm. And I have seen Dunkin' Donuts 15 to 20 cars. And there's two Dunkin' Donuts, and both of them, the one over by the Four Seasons Liquor, is backs up all the way around the building and almost comes out to Route 9. Mm -hmm. The one in the center of town, if the, if the people in the buildings do not redirect the cars to wrap through the parking lot, they tend to back up on Route 9. Hence my so, question, are they serving food? Because that slows the line moving considerably. There's, if there's, you're toasting bagels or you're making muffins or sandwiches, I mean. My, my understanding is that all of this is going to be grab and go kind of stuff that, you know, the coffee, the, if there's muffins, they're, they're pre-made, you, you get it in a bag and, you know, off you go. So I don't think they're going to be preparing or, or heating up anything here. Um, so that so I, really I agree with Jim, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think even even. I mean, Starbucks line moves quick. Yep. Dunkin' possibly a little slower because they sell donuts and stuff. People are getting sometimes a dozen donuts, but Starbucks moves quick. Mm -hmm. That line hustles. I mean, they, they get in line and they, they're moving. And I, I would believe this would have to be the same thing here. However, sure. the cars don't go nose to nose. Sometimes there's a space or two between the cars, depending how the mood of the person driving the car is. Mm -hmm. Not going to have a traffic cop directing the cars for sure. So you need to provide more queuing space for these vehicles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, it's certainly something that we struggled with, you know, from a design perspective is what, you know, what is that number? What's that magic number? And, you know, the, the concern with entering and exit only off of Bay Road were, were two things. You know, one is that, you know, obviously this is a very limited property in terms of what you know what what it can what it's capable of and what it can what it can support um there's there's three curb cuts now offering to close one you know obviously if another one gets closed on um on russell street there's a very good chance that that never is going to have a chance to be reclaimed i don't know as though dot would ever you know grant permission to provide another curb cut in there so the value of the property diminishes quite a bit um is was one consideration and then the other one just from a safety standpoint is that directing all of the traffic in from a single entrance and you know having to cut across vehicles exiting the the drive-through lane was you know was you know another concern of of you know equal importance so um i don't i don't want to dismiss you know what you're saying because it was certainly you know what do you do if if the car that's pulling in um doesn't have the, the, the mindset that, you know, sitting in a, in a lane of travel, you know, a travel lane is not an appropriate place to sit for a cup of coffee. Um, you know, what do you do about that? And I don't, you know, hopefully if there's not enough room, people continue on and, and go somewhere else. But obviously, uh, you know, the, the right number of, of cars for stacking was, was a, um, you know, a, a little bit of a, a, a crapshoot in this case, if, if you can appreciate that. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I mean, I mean, could you move the Bay Road entrance 20 feet or 15 feet westward? And that mm -hmm. way the cars are more straight shot in and up. I mean, yeah. bottom line is the way you've got this designed, I can't approve it because the cars I fear could back up on Route 9. I'll tell you what, you get me uh, a letter from DOT in, in Northampton that said it's okay to ha have this the way you're showing it with cars backing on Route 9. Yep. And we'll make it a state issue, not a town of Hadley issue. Sure. 
And we are just, a, yeah, just, you know, I mean, so we are going through that process now. There's some other, you know, com general comments that we're, that we're addressing, but we're, we are in the midst of that process. So, um, you know, it's certainly something that they are um, looking at as well. So we're, we're trying to understand, um, you know, how that all will play out. Yeah. Jeff, I don't, I don't want to design for you, but I would, I would be open to giving you two adjacent curb cuts on Bay Road so that the westerly one is in mm. and, and the easterly one is out. And so then you never cross. Sure. Yeah, or put, put a separate one. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. point, Mark. Good point. Yep. Great. You know, I mean, the, you can also uh, just just re redirect it to have instead of going into the right, you go in on the left and out on the uh, left. Except that the drive-through window doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, it would if you where you, where you reverse the arrows at the Bay Road. Yeah. Oh, and I got then, you. Yeah. Yeah, and then it goes around like that and comes out that way. Sure. And you exit this way. Yeah. But I think I think you're right. So, I mean, if if you know if if the if the decision is to move this versus no project, I think absolutely that moving this entrance on Bay Road and modifying that that intersection that curb cut would be the the solution. Okay. Now the, the two story building. How, how do you figure that's not included in the parking area? It's part of the oh. building and the storage area for the building. Is I, I did. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's a 900. Sorry, Jim. Uh, it's a 900. Where's that table? 90. It's a 900 square foot building or a thousand feet. And so we oh double. I'm sorry. Yes, you're that, right. That's with the second floor. With the second. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. Yes. Okay. So it's a thousand twenty four sweet thousand twenty four square feet with both floors. Uh, no, I think I think you're correct, and I'm wrong in that it's a thousand square feet on on a single floor so yes it, it would be four thousand square feet that would be required considering the well the i don't think you would storage. i don't i don't think you would double the outdoor seating you would just double the footprint right and i think what and, and again that's a that's an error on our on our part this this footprint here which would include that stairwell is is just over a thousand square feet with the addition of the storage space above that is, you know, a thousand, whatever, 800. Right. So then the parking would be, you know, 3,600 or 4,000 square feet of area that would be required. Okay. And the, uh, the seating on the east side, is that intended for customers or employees or, or both? I think both. I think primarily, you know, customers, but, um, yeah, it was just to take advantage to the extent that we could of this, you know, little bit of green space here. Okay. Did we get a peer review on this one? I don't recall seeing one come in. No, and I wasn't. I'm. I. I wasn't aware that one was needed or of what what they were reviewing. So, we certainly. Well, your drainage calculations for one. Um, the uh, part I, I took a quick look through the parking or the traffic analysis, and um, yeah, I don't think it really addressed it. It didn't didn't seem to really address stacking, and uh, you know, it it makes the the pitch that well, we recognize this that. A lot of the reason that people want to be on Route 9 is to take advantage of the existing um, pass by traffic. So um, you're, they're only claiming responsibility for generating 18 new vehicle trips, uh, with the majority of the trips being pass by trips. But uh, it really doesn't you know, analyze the sight distance, a little bit of circulation. But I don't see it really addresses the um, uh, the the stacking issue. The uh, only other the only other way I see this working is if you slide the central parking toward the east and you widen the north lane so that you could have two lanes stacking and then they merge to one 
at the turn. You know what I mean? Um, sort of, but I don't know whether, yeah, just the. Just yeah, so <laughs> no, if that north, yeah, if that were yeah. double wide, so that once you get full or you get half full, so someone slides up next to him, and yeah. then they take turn. But but how you get them to take turns is uh, a challenge. And, and it's and it's hard, particularly because the the property line is you know right is this is this interior right. line here. So we're right. you know, we've got less site that is being used right now, which is right. you know, part of the right. challenge. Right. So we're obviously still waiting for you know DOT, DOT comments. Um, we have been before the Conservation Commission because this is all in floodplain. We're really not you know we're we're, we're providing additional storage capacity you know in in their uh, you know under their jurisdiction. Um, and I guess Bill, just to your question about peer review for stormwater. Um, so just to clarify, you know what? So what is there now? Is this entire site is paved and or this you know canopy or building area all of this drains either directly to russell street or to bay road and so you know what i would anticipate is any peer review would say that there's a reduction in in paved impervious area and that is being directed to encourage infiltration but beyond that there really isn't anything more that we can do on this site um there's no catch bases there's no outlets there's nothing, nothing more that we can do other than try to hold as much as we can there. And uh, I'll just mention in passing, which I'm sure you're going to have to address at some point in the future, that uh, the largest of the rain garden uh, is on town property. Yep. <laughs> so understanding, right, the board's appetite for, you know, trying to improve the site over there. Who are, you, who are you dealing with at DOT, um, Jeff? Do you know? Uh, Bow and I think, is it Garrett? I forget who the, whoever, whoever is in charge of their permitting through SHAPS is, is who we've been. I forget the. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to find his name right now. Could you create a slight uh, ridge at the northwest and the southeast um, entrances to to contain water and and guide it into a swale instead of out onto the roads? Um, so what the challenge now is that the high point of the site is roughly where that existing canopy is now. Yep. And so to get, you know, we really don't want to excavate too, too much lower, just given, you know, the history of the site and don't want to get into a whole lot of, um, yep. you know, soil yep. is issue. Is uh, well, well, so we're, we're lowering, what we're doing is we're lowering the grades in these islands. And so we're slightly modifying the grades of the pavement such that it, you know, we're directing water to these, you can see these little inlet locations. There's one here, there's one here. We're showing one here as well as here. And then on the Eastern Port site, we've got one in here. So we've, you know, we're, we're warping the pavement enough to be able to direct water into these locations, into these, you know, rain gardens for lack of better terms. Mm -hmm. um, when these fill up, they're gonna overflow on the road and flow out of the site just like they do now. But at least mm -hmm. these are, you know, some depressions that we've been able to create as a result of removing that pavement. Do you need CONCOM approval on this one, Jeff? We do. We are, yes, because it's all floodplain. Okay. Yeah. So we have started that process. And they, <laughs> this is sort of that, you know, chicken and egg thing. They wanted to wait to hear what you guys were going to say. So. <laughs> uh, you said, you said when those overflow, that's going to go, go out onto the Russell Street, could you go underground from those over to the east side and create some kind of uh, underground retention there? I mean, the, the, the challenge is that we can't, you know, we, there's nowhere to discharge it. 
you mm -hmm. know, once we put something underground, we've got to have right. some sort of overflow for it. Gotcha. Okay, uh, Jim, uh, Mike's bag table has a question. Oh, okay. Mike, yes. Hi, thank you. Um, just a question about site access for the fire department. Um, so NFPA standard requires 20 feet for the driveway. And I know you're considering different options here now um, on how you want to access. I, I can't quite see what the, the dimension is of that. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, so this, this entry lane, you know, coming in off of Bay Road, at least is 29 feet. There's a 20 foot drive lane dimension behind the parking stalls. Um, it then narrows to 12 feet because it's a one way, you know, it's intended to be a one way um, circulation aisle. Um, That's, and then we've I'm, got I'm fine with that. I'm just wondering. So if we're, if you're keeping the route nine access, mm. I would just ask, um, I can get you our, you know, our truck dimension. Sure. We would be respond. We can't, you know, it's a one way on Bay Road. We could do a loop around here, depending on how you lay this out. Um, right. But if we were going to come off of Route 9, we'd be able to, we need to swing our biggest truck through. Mm. So being able to make that, that, that turn and then, you know, access that southern driveway um, sure. over the building. I, I can get that info to you just to see how it would work. I can, okay. That would be, that would be. Yeah, that would be helpful. Thank you. I do have the same concerns that Jim has uh, just with uh, the stacking and backing out onto Route 9. Even even the thought of pushing that Bay Road access, people really whip down there. So there would, um, living in the area there, I, you know, we see it all the time, how quickly they come off onto that Bay Road. So uh, some sort of maybe an angled access rather than just straight like that. I don't know if that's possible to make it more of a... Mm -hmm. Our, anyways, that was my two comments. Uh, are you planning on, uh, do you have, are you going to be utilizing propane or anything like that as well? Because that is the floodplain there. So uh, that would be a part of the conservation. Um, we usually talk about the conservation if you need propane on the site, if there's any tanks or anything like that. Okay. I'll have to find out. I don't know the particulars of that. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. But I can certainly ask. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Other questions, comments? Okay. Hearing none. Okay. So you've got uh, a few things to look at, Jeff. Yep. The uh, stacking, the route, the Bay Road, if you go on Bay Road, moving them, angled, whatever it might be, make sure um, or the chief, our chief will give me the information on fire trucks, make sure we can get an access in there. Yep. Um, and of course, you're still waiting for DOT and conservation and the parking requirements for the two story building. Mm -hmm. um, anything else on my uh, lighting? Do you have any lighting on the site? Oh, that one light. I'm sorry. One, sorry, one light. Yeah. The, yeah. Okay. That's all set. Okay. Uh, I, I might like to, I would like to see a supplement of some sort to the traffic study that specifically addresses stacking. Okay. And have you thought about snow storage? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously there's, there's these, you know, these depression areas that would, mm. you know, accommodate a fair amount of snow that the entire Eastern portion of the site you know, we're not really touching at all. Um, so I think, you know, I think there's sort of ample yeah. green space on the site. Yeah, I was thinking that that eastern portion where you have the five trees mm. seems, I mean, in my untrained mind as a, a great opportunity for a uh, water quality swale or rain garden or something, but maybe, mm. I mean, maybe because I'm not seeing grading or because the grading to just maybe that doesn't work yeah so we're i mean we're certainly directing you know we've got a couple of locations where we're we're trying to direct as much water there as we can mm -hmm. um it is yeah it's it, it's it's a challenge given where the existing building is and trying to maintain that floor elevation relative to the 
to the rest of the site. So um, yeah, I'd, I'd certainly appreciate your comments because we're trying to trying to trying to get as much out of the site as we can. Yeah, and and when I mentioned the the cars, the twenty five cars at and twenty to twenty five cars at Starbucks and fifteen to twenty at at Dunkin' Donuts, Jeff. I'm not exaggerating. I physically oh, sure. counted that many cars at a time, and I'm flabbergasted. People would wait in line that long to get their coffee at either one of those two places. Yeah. What those are numbers I've seen. I was like, wow. Yeah. So well, that's that's a brand too. Uh, Starbucks trades in the New York Stock Exchange. They <laughs> got a lot of advertising. So yeah. Um, like I said, if, you, if you're half as successful, you're looking at ten to twelve cars. And yep. being right off of the bridge, that's probably not inconceivable to, to have that. Sure. So, yeah, no, I completely appreciate the comments and it's something that we, yeah, that we wrestled with, you know, in the office. Well, just wasn't, wasn't there a coffee place up route nine towards the east that was not successful? Similar size? I think there was. Oh, there's been coffee shops. I mean, there, there, there have been not successful. It's absolutely true. I mean, Esalon. Yeah, look, so look, I mean, look at, I look at branding has a lot to do with it. Branding you know, has a I lot mean, to do with it. it. It's, it's, if they have good coffee, word will get around and they will be busy. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't know what to say, but we got a plan. We just can't know, say well, it's not going to work. Out, no, it, it might listen, work. I'm just pointing out stuff. And if they're successful, we need to be able to address that. Yep. Otherwise, we're going to look very silly. Yep. So, okay. Okay, great. Um, we can, yeah, we'll come back. Um, when do you want to come back, Jeff? Um, I would, I mean, if you, if there's room on the next agenda in a couple of weeks, I think, you know, we can at least get some concepts together and, and entertain that discussion. Okay. You want to come back uh, October 4th? Sure. Okay, we got Kurt Shumman coming back for the Howard Johnson stuff, but we can certainly, uh, what you call it? Okay. You know, I think also, you'll be here for that probably anyway. So yeah, we also asked. Uh, oh no, um, no. TVP is going to be on the eighteenth. The eighteenth, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so October four is available. Okay. Great. Great. All right. Super. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, and I, I don't know if this is the right place to just uh, touch on the the Gardner Supply Project. I don't know. Oh, yeah. If now is a good time to, to sure. just touch on that, but um, I did forward a, a review letter from uh, Bucky Sparkles, who had been looking at the stormwater for that site. And one of the things that we um, I can I've got actually on this same presentation um, show you just what those updates were, so that um, you can understand what those um, what his letter was referencing. Um, so the, the existing site, um, and it's really talking about the 287 property. So the, the proposal that had originally been submitted included a drive lane that wrapped around the building and then exited back out onto Route 9 via this curb cut that's on the eastern portion of the site. That additional impervious area was more than we could really accommodate with that existing basin. Um, so we had a little bit of back and forth with, um, with Bucky to get to a place that um, we're now, so this is just an existing conditions plan, but what we're going to do is utilize the, the more east or western curb cut um, and eliminate, you know, the, this one's still going to be constructed as part of the DOT work. We had closed, we had proposed closing this one with cement, um, with some cement planters or somehow, you know, uh, closing that off, but the idea is to remove the asphalt and drive lane in this location, you know, a little bit around the edges here, such that um, what we end up with is all of the truck circulation then coming out, coming out here and avoiding the need to add that extra uh, drive lane. And so the removal of that existing asphalt relative to, you know, what's being installed was a net reduction in impervious, which was, you know, great for all purposes. So there's actually some additional capacity in this basin. And, and this plan is, is what it was that that uh, review letter was referencing. Okay. Everything else in the project stays exactly the same. Okay. 
What now? There's there's a bunch of storage trailer containers around the site. Are most yep. of those going to disappear? Yes, that's that's the goal of this project is to clean up the site and consolidate all those storage units and containers and clean it up. Okay, great. What's in the existing uh, building? It showed you with the orange roof on it there. This this one here where the child care center was. Yeah. So it's mostly office space right now. They've got a staff, you know, a staff lounge. There really isn't much space in the existing facility. So um, it's mostly, you know, office and employee space right now. They've got a little bit of storage of, you know, display materials, marketing materials. Um, but it's primarily going to be for, for employees and offices. Okay. So. Uh, so then the trucks going through there wouldn't be disrupting uh, customers? No. P pedestrian Gotcha. No, and that that was the really the goal of this is to get that out of you know the sort of central portion of the site, so they can enter off of you know the the main main entrance, come in, circulate through the site. They can unload what they need to here, um, you know, as well as this portion because this is all employee parking. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. That seems better. <clears throat> so that's the update to that. So all of that came in today. I did circulate it around, uh, and we can take that up on the uh, on the fourth. Okay, as well, if that's when you want to. Sure. Yeah, I, my understanding at least was that you know that there was the um, potential for for waiver of site plan review, provided that the stormwater you know um, uh, peer review was was uh, came back favorably. So I guess yeah, just I don't know what the process or procedure is but that would so the the process the the policy we have we have adopted as of january was that we uh anything of that nature we want to have by the friday before the meeting gotcha. so that we have a chance to circulate it and everyone has a chance to look at it between friday and tuesday uh, if it comes in on Tuesday I can't guarantee that anyone is going to even open their email before they come to the meeting. And, uh, I, I came in late. I, I, I'm sorry. Okay. So we'll put, we'll put, are we already? Okay. So that's fine. Yep. So um, we do have uh, iPhone. Is that you, Mark? That would be me. You're, you're on, well, there's Mark's iPhone, but there's also someone else listed here as iPhone. Well, that's this is, me. this is Diane Kirby from um, Amped Up Electric Rides. I'm sorry I came in late. I have COVID. I'm very sick. So I apologize for being late. If you would all be kind enough to let me speak. So I only have two things to say. Okay. We'll, we'll, Diane, Diane, hold up. We'll take you up in a few minutes. Okay. Hold on. I don't know if I'm going to last that long. <clears throat> I think we're pretty much done with Jeff. Are, are we? Yes. Okay. So see you in two weeks, Jeff. Great. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. okay. Diane, you're up. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm Diane from Amp Double Electric Rides at 299 Russell Street. I appreciate you all giving me my variance, but um, the Hampshire Mall has invited me to move into the mall. And I think that that's going to be a very good uh, business decision to take them up on. So um, I'll be moving in as of October 1st. So you, Jim, I sent you a, an email asking, what do I need to legally move into the mall? And you asked about signage. There's nothing that's going to be outside of the mall representing my company. The mall already told me that I cannot have a sign under the target sign. I cannot have a sign on the building. <coughs> Excuse me. The only sign I will have is inside the mall at my entrance in the hallway. I'll be across from the Planet Fitness. And there'll be no, any outside display of electric bikes? Zero. They don't allow that at the mall. Okay. okay well, so everything will be indoors. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then it's pretty cut and dry. Anything. Right. Yeah. I don't think she needs anything from Mr. Dwyer. Is that correct? Uh, not from us, but you will have to uh, deal with the select board to transfer your 
class one um, license. Okay. Uh, I think that you will not have to worry about getting another variance because you will be now further away from Steve Lewis Subaru. Yeah. Will I have to um, have a, if I have to be in a meeting with them in the, in the town meeting like I am with you right now, or do I just contact I them? Uh, I, I don't know what the procedure is for transferring a license. Yeah. So um, you'll have to contact the uh, administrator's office for guidance. Yeah, it, it, may, it may be a minor paperwork thing, but we're not sure. Okay, because right now, <clears throat> you know, nothing's really going to change except that everything's going to be inside now instead of inside, outside, inside, outside. But, you know, I will be open throughout the hours of the mall, which increases the amount of hours that I'm open now. But I have to, that's the rule of the mall. I have to be open during mall hours. So that's about it. Well, thank you very much for taking my call. I appreciate it. Yes. And good luck there. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good night, everybody. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. One thing we didn't ask the coffee shop people are. What are the hours of operation? That slipped my mind. Well, we so, can get that next time when they yeah, come. Yeah. Right. I, mean, that's never, I don't think that's going to matter too much. So. I'd like to know. Yeah. <laughs> so is it an all-nighter? Uh, Mr. Dwyer, do you have anything else? I have nothing else now that Mr. Iser was able to make it in. Okay. Um... Just for everybody's information, I think you got the, the email. We got an affordable housing, not affordable. The uh, housing inventory. The housing meeting tomorrow night afternoon. If you're interested in watching it, we're going to talk about a little bit about surveys that have come in, a very brief overview of what some of the comments have been and results and what our next steps are as far as PV um, can consolidating that into some kind of report of what's going to be done to get going. Okay, Mr. Quinlan, do you have something? You're on me. Okay, we can't hear you. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now you're getting right on top of your speaker. I know. So um, Terry wanted to know, she's putting away all the plans that she's scanned so far. Um, I know you guys aren't sure where your storage is going to really be yet. She didn't know if you wanted them just put, everything put in cardboard boxes or if you guys <laughs> want to get like the big, um, heavy Rubbermaid kind of containers that we have that we're storing our maps. I, I mean, all our plans in. Well, let me come in and see her sometime during the, when, when does she work? She's there every day in the morning. So in at least morning. 1130. Okay, tomorrow's not a good day. I'll try to see her Thursday and we can work that out. Okay. Okay. Because she has, yeah, quite a few plans. She has a lot of your plans done already. Yeah, I'm sure she does. Okay. All right, great. I'll let her know then. Okay. Okay. That's it. That's it. Okay. Um, <laughs> just waving. Okay, hi, Tom. Anybody else have anything? Nope. Hearing none. All in motion. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting it. Motion.